Hello, this is Richard White with a little bit of information on how you might write the Monty Hall problem. Uh, I've got a basic template all set up here and I'm ready to start editing this Monty Hall problem. And there's basically four steps that we're going to take here. First thing we need to do is hide prizes behind doors. So I'm going to set up a list of prizes. Um, I'm only going to use this right at the very beginning to keep track of the prizes. I'm going to need to keep track of the doors as well. So I'm creating a list here of the doors. That's an empty list to begin with. And now I'm going to randomly pick one of the prizes three times in a row. I'll randomly pick a prize and store those in the doors. And those will be the prizes behind each door. <clears throat> the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go through this list and get a random prize number. You can see the length of the prizes list is currently three there. So I'm going to get a random number between 0 and 2 and that will be the prize that I pick. I'm going to call that prize number there. So I'm using the length of prizes. Whatever my prize number is, 0, 1, or 2, I'm going to take that item from prizes, whatever's there, and I'm going to pop that number or the object at that number off and put it in the doors. And just to check out how this works, I'm going to just do one of them first. Just to check out and make sure I understand how this works, I'm going to print out what the doors list looks like after I've done this once. I'm going to check my coding as I go here. So you can see I picked the car that first time. It looks like I got the goat that time, and then the car again, and then the goat. So I'm getting lots of different options every time I run this. Now I need to do it for all the doors. Now I need to get a prize for each of those doors. So I'm just going to keep on going through that list of prizes. I'm going to set up a while loop. As long as there are still prizes in that list, while the length of that prize list, prizes, is greater than zero, I'm going to go through and pick random prizes off of it and pop them into doors. So I'll just take these guys and shove these all over. This is the body of my loop. And now let's try that out and see what it looks like when I run that. <clears throat> goat, 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 and then goat, goat, car. So I end up with goat, goat, car, then car, goat, goat. You can see it's giving me a list in that doors list each time. So it looks like it's working the way I want it to. It's mixing them up a little bit. I don't care about prizes now. Doors is going to be where the prizes are contained, and that's what I'm going to focus on. Now I need to find out which door they want to look at first. So I'm going to ask them for that information. And I'm going to put this in choice one because they actually get two choices here. And I'm going to keep track of those choices separately. So I'm going to ask them to enter their choice of a door between one and three. When they do that, I'm going to have to subtract one from the number because their choice will be one to three. But those prizes are actually numbered zero, one, and two. So I'll always be subtracting one from the value that they give me for choice one there. <clears throat> well, once we've got that choice, we have to go through and figure out a different door to show them. And it can't be a door that has the car behind it. And it can't be a door that has a goat behind it if it's the, go if it's the door that they chose. Now, I've seen some programs where people are doing some fancy swapping around. We don't want to swap the prizes around. That's kind of the equivalent of saying, uh, pick a number between 1 and 10. And then when somebody says 7, you go, oh, so it's not going to be 7. No, that wasn't it. So we're not going to change anything around. We're just going to look through the doors there, and we'll, we'll find the correct door that we want to report to them. And again, we're going to get a random door here, and we're going to find out if it meets two criteria. I'm going to report this random door to them if it's not the door that has a car in it. So that's going to be if door list rand door is not equal to car. And it also has to be a door that they haven't chosen. Whether it's a car or a goat, it can't be the door that they've already cho chosen. So choice one minus one, that is their value one to three minus one, can't be equal to the random door that I've chosen. If those two things are true, if those two things turn out to be true, and I'm going to put them on multiple lines just to make it a little bit easy, easier to read. If those two things are true, then it's a door that I can show them. It doesn't have a car behind it, and it's not the one they chose. Then I'm going to show it to them, and I can, I can do that by simply breaking out of this loop. If, I, if that condition wasn't met, then I would have to get a random number again. And I just keep going through and getting a number, a random number, until those conditions are satisfied. 
Once I do break out of that loop though, then Rand door is the number of the door I want to show them. So I'm reporting here, take a look at Rand door plus one. I chose a number between zero and two, so now I have to report it as one to three. And then it's going to show them what that door looks like. So I'll print out doors, Rand door, not with quotes, doors, square brackets, Rand door. So that'll be the one that's not the car and not one that they already chose. Now they get one last chance, right? They get one last chance to try and figure out what's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to test the program here before I do that. Oh, it looks like we have an error in line 24. Let's see, line 24. Oh, I forgot to close the brackets there. And we'll try and run this again. Oh. Oh, I fixed that. Okay. Oh, okay. So you know what happens, right? If you have an error in line 24, check the lines before it. Probably not line 23 because that's a comment. But if you go all the way up to line 21, you can see what's going on up there. Looks like I forgot to close my last parenthesis there. Good. So I'll write that and let's run it now and see what happens. Which door do you want? And it looks like it's showing me a different door. So that's good. That's good, working the way it's supposed to. Uh, it might be helpful if I do a little debug thing in here. So I'm actually gonna print out the doors at the beginning while I'm testing this so I can make sure that it's working just the way I want it to. So I'm gonna say debug and print out the door list here, doors. And that, will, that way I'll be able to see what's going on. So it looks like it's successfully reporting or identifying the door that doesn't have a car and that isn't the one that I picked. So that's working just the way I want it to. So now all I really need to do is ask them that last thing, which door do you want for your second chance? So I called the first one choice one, I'll probably call this choice two. And we'll do the same thing, we'll get an input, we'll evaluate it to turn it into a number. And then we'll print out the price that's listed at that door. So this is your last chance. Which door? Again, they're going to enter number one to three. And regardless of what it is, we're going to print that out. This is just the end. You can fan fancy this up a little bit more later on if you want. But this is uh, the bare bones of the program that should get it working here. Let's write that and then we'll see what happens when we run it. Which car do you want or which door do you want? Two. We'll take a look at three. That's a goat. This is your last chance. Which door? And I choose one and it's still a car. So again, this is working just the way it should. We're not switching around the prizes at the last minute or anything to make that, uh, to make it work better for us. We're honestly leaving the prizes where they are and we're reporting the results as they get them. So, looks like a pretty good little program. I hope this helps you in finishing up this uh, independent project number two. Thanks.